Hello Raw Dinosaur Adventure, I'm Joseph Hubbard and hey I used to work at Raw Dinosaur Adventure, I used to work down at the Secret Animal Garden and I used to help look after all the animals. But I stopped working there because I wanted to go dig up dinosaurs. So ever since then I've been travelling the world, digging up dinosaurs, studying them and finding out more about them. Things like this, well this isn't an actual fossil, this is an exact replica of a dinosaur jaw. Any idea what kind of dinosaur jaw? Because if you thought T-Rex, you would be absolutely right. This is a baby T-Rex. But don't be fooled by its baby appearance. This is the largest ever T-Rex tooth discovered. Wow, that's a lot bigger, isn't it? This is from Sue, the great big T-Rex that was found in the USA. And that is a mean looking tooth. So come and join me as we explore some things about these dinosaurs and I'm really going to try and show you the true life of a paleontologist because it isn't all just the trundle off down to dig up dinosaurs. There's a lot of work behind the scenes and hopefully you'll learn a little bit about what goes on on this episode. Now before we even start looking at dinosaurs and talking about them, we need to ask the question, what is a fossil? Because words tell you a lot about the science that you're studying, and fossil is no exception. Have a look at this fantastic fossil we have here. This is a mosasaur skull, and you can even see some of the neck bones up this end. Now mosasaur is technically not quite a dinosaur, it's one of the big swimming marine creatures, but it's often classified as a dinosaur, and that's alright, they don't mind. Um, can you see the big teeth in there? Can you see the jaw? Fantastic. But this is a fossil. It's encased in rock. Now this comes from Africa and the word fossil is very interesting. It's actually made up of two parts, fos and ill. Fos refers to a hole and ill refers to what's in the hole. So fossil means in a hole or means to be dug up. So if you want to go looking for fossils, you need to go looking in a hole. Now sometimes the sea helps you and makes an enormous hole from this side of the country to France and we call them cliffs. And you can go finding fossils in cliffs, but other times, yeah, you need to get your hammer and shovel out, you need to start digging, you need to start clearing it away and you can discover your fossils. And you can get some really remarkable things, even like this Allosaurus skull here. Wonderful stuff, wonderful fossils and really great dinosaurs to discover. Now I've been all over the world digging up dinosaurs from the USA to Australia, New Zealand and everywhere else in between and it's really fascinating to find out that actually the study of dinosaurs started here in the UK and we can be very proud of that fact. You see the first dinosaur to be discovered was Iguanodon and uh, it was just a little bit of tooth. Oh Iguanodon, that's the big dinosaur with the big spiky thumbs up. Ah, now it was discovered by, well there's a bit of controversy actually, it was either discovered by Mary Mantell or it was discovered by Dr Gideon Mantell. There are different accounts of the two but they were certainly out together at the same time when it was discovered and they found a big tooth. A big tooth that they thought was an iguana's tooth and so they ended up taking it back, studying it and it ended up becoming Iguanodon, a giant iguana-like lizard. But that wasn't actually the first dinosaur to be described and given a name, even though it was the first to be discovered. The first to be described was discovered by William Buckland, and he discovered this jawbone right here. Um, it's quite a fascinating jawbone. The real one, is, this is just an exact replica, it's the exact same weight and colour and everything. The real one is on display at the Oxford Natural History Museum, and it's quite fascinating because you can see the little teeth. You see, it turns out that it seems that many dinosaurs had the ability to lose a tooth and regrow it. And you can see these little teeth just starting to poke through here. Now this was the first one to be described. It was found by William Buckland, it was taken to Sir Richard Owen, and they studied it and decided to call it Megalosaurus. The great big giant saurus. The lizard-like creature that moves like a snake. Okay. Sir Richard Owen? Ah, oh, he was the founder of the Natural History Museum in London. The great big cathedral-like building which was there to put all these fossils and natural history specimens on display in order to decorate it and to allow people to come through and visit it and learn more about the natural world. Because you've got to remember back then in 1840, um, 
People couldn't really get on a plane and fly to Australia and see all the fossils. People couldn't jump on a plane, fly to the jungle and see all the wonderful animals. So Richard Owen said, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to design this amazing place where people can come and see them for themselves. Where we can fill it with fossils from all over the globe and lots of wonderful stuff. And you can still go and visit there today. It's well worth a visit. Now this was one of the first dinosaurs to be described. In fact the name dinosaur was first invented by Richard Owen in 1844. But uh, it's not by no means the only dinosaur to be discovered in the UK. There's been many many more including, well it's not quite a dinosaur, but have a look at this thing here. Absolutely fantastic. Now again, this is another exact replica of an ichthyosaur. And it's a very famous ichthyosaur. It was the first ever ichthyosaur to be discovered. And it was discovered not by some great scientist, but by a local fossil hunter called Mary Anning, who lived down on the coast of Lyme Regis and Charmouth, and she dug up fossils for a living. She would go down every single morning with her dog, she'd walk along the beachfront, she'd pick up, you know, the curly whirly ammonites and the bits of bones and all sorts, she'd come back and sell it. And she discovered this great sea dragon. Yes, if you go to the Natural History Museum, you can see this very own original fossil and you can see a little plaque on it which says sea dragons. They thought these were great big enormous sea dragons back then. And you've got to admit, it does look pretty big and scary. Even all the teeth and the detail on this is really quite remarkable. And it was found by Mary Anning, it was dug up and preserved and collected, and it was sold to Richard Owen, who put it on display in that Natural History Museum. And, uh, Hey, you can even find some of these own fossils for yourself. If you go down to Lyme Regis and Charmouth and walk along the front, you can even find little bits of bones and shells and ammonites and all sorts of marvellous stuff. It really is amazing what you can find out there if you know what you're looking for. So we're going to finish up this little clip with uh, one last fun and exciting fossil to look at before we look to our next clip where we're going to talk about, hey, what does it actually take to be a paleontologist? And what does a paleontologist spend most of his time doing? Well, here's a fun little one. Um, I have these two little dinosaur things here. What are they? Um, you can see this big round one there. Well, uh, this is the same one. It's um, actually been cut in half and then it's been polished so you can see inside of it. What are these? Well there's no beating around the bush. Boys and girls this is, well boys mostly, dinosaur poo. Um, yeah that's exactly what it is. You see we as paleontologists call it coprolite which is a big posh word of really saying exactly the same thing. Um, it is dinosaur poo. Now you can legitimately ask the question how on earth do I know that that's dinosaur poo? It looks just like a rock and it doesn't even smell very bad. Well, you see, sometimes you can find dinosaur fossils which are so well preserved, they've still got the contents of their stomach and gut inside them. And so as you're digging up the dinosaur bones and you find the contents, you find the poo inside the dinosaur basically, you can look at that and for sure you know that that is poo. So when you go and have a look around and you find this kind of stuff outside the dinosaur, you can match it up to what's inside the dinosaur and you know for sure now, this is definitely dinosaur poo, or coprolite. Now, you see, this stuff, as disgusting as it may seem, is actually very, very useful. Because dinosaur fossils by themselves do not actually tell you much. You have to use a lot of imagination and thinking and theoretical science to glue the ligaments and the muscles and paint them into all the wonderful colours that you see on television. But a lot of that is just theory. A lot of that is hypothesis. A lot of that is thinking. But this stuff can tell you things about the dinosaurs that you cannot get from their skeletons. Things like, what did it eat and how did it live? You see, you can cut it in half, have a look inside, work out what's inside and hey, you can even have a look about the dinosaur's ecosystem and environment. Can you see that little sort of yellowy splodge? Oh, that's not actually part of the dinosaur poo. That is a hole that has become filled in with calcite. Yes, they had dung beetles back in the dinosaur times and the dung beetles would bury through the poo just like they do today and leave these holes for them to be fossilized and this poo had to be buried very very quickly in order to stop it well you see i used to work with animals and any of my ex-colleagues will tell you or you'll know for sure if you have a dog or a cat or a pet that poo doesn't hang around for very long it smells it goes off and it's horrible you see if you want to bury and fossilize dinosaur poo you have to do it quickly before it gets 
more horrible and even more disgusting than what it already is. And even before the dung beetle gets finished with it. So there you go, a fun little thing that you can learn from all of these dinosaur and fossils. So join me on that next clip as we have a look at some real life work that I will be doing with some real fossils, work that I've been doing here, and we will have a look and see what it takes to be a paleontologist.